Hi everyone. So today I'm going to talk about freedom, what freedom means to me, I think how I got there, and what I think everyone should begin to think about when it comes to their own personal freedoms and ways that they can also be free. I'm really excited to bring up these conversations and I'm really excited to wear this really crinkly look and hopefully the ASMR people out there can get a little bit of joy from hearing me crinkle on camera. Um, thank you for much for stay, blah, blah, blah. Thank you so much for watching and stick around. Understand Cause she's Sophie from the man Cause that girl does what no one can That's Frank She's the type of girl that you love to detest But when the one that's feelings you choose to repress She's so beautiful I don't know how to address Let's call her Hi everybody, and welcome to another installment of Frank's TV. Uh, I'm your host, Frank's, and today I'm looking forward to talking about something that I value very much, which is freedom. Um, freedom. Okay, so how? Sorry, I'm. I just got into this like, into this, and. If, if, any, if any of you were at this, um, the flu- right, all the fucking noise. If any of you were at the fluid show in whenever, fucking 1996 or whatever year it was, then you remember the red mylar walk around dress that I had. And, um, also something else that you should know is that I really don't enjoy, uh, wasting stuff. And so rather than wear something multiple times, which I know is like a fashion faux pas, I'll sometimes, um, take stuff that I've made before and sort of repurpose it and rewear it and make it into something that's brand new and equally as me as the first time I wore it. So this is what that outfit turned into. Um, it's sort of a one-time wear. The stitching is not uh, holding on great. It's made out of plastic. Um, but this material has been used for so many things and I thought that this was another exciting way to use it. So here I am, crinkly. Um, Crinkly. So freedom, you know, how do I want to talk about freedom? I was thinking about this for a while and I was like, okay, so what makes sense when it comes to breaking into this category? You know, I think that freedom means a lot of things to a lot of different people. I think it's something that worldwide, um, no matter where you live and what you do, there's always a certain level of freedom that everybody wants to attain. You know, I think on a worldly level, it looks like financial freedom. It looks like uh, being able to be educated, being able to own a home, being able to not respond to anybody or maybe own your own business or things like that. And I think that those things are very valuable. You know, I think that being able to be autonomous um, is one of the most uh, rare and sought after forms of freedom that kind of exist in this world. And that's something that even I've had a lot of struggle with myself in working for myself versus trying to, you know, work for a corporation or, um, there's a, there's a, there's a quote that I heard that I really liked and it said, you either make your own dreams happen or you work on uh, making someone else's dreams happen. And I think for me personally, I chose my own dreams. Um, whether it be by my choice or by circumstance, you know, things kind of happen how they happen. So sometimes you don't really have a choice in what type of freedom you kind of get the access to. Um, but that's strictly in like a working conversation. So I wanted to sort of flip the narrative about freedom and reconsider it as a state of mind. Um, I'm saying um a lot. I'm just thinking, I'm trying to make sure that I'm not saying something crazy 
So, and of course, like I'm working on this shit and it's just taking its time and I'm letting it kind of come as it comes. Um, okay, but so that, that, that within itself is a form of freedom for me. You know, being able to speak clearly and think about what I'm saying is freedom because that's actually, okay, I'll go ahead and say it. That's one of the first places where I really, really value freedom is being able to speak, you know, being able to say what you need to say being able to be honest, being able to be forthright, being able to say what's on your mind wholeheartedly, without reservation, that's freedom to me. Um, I think it's one of those areas of understanding where people, mm, I don't even know how I wanna say this. Basically, it just means a lot to me to be able to say what I wanna say and to not have to think about it and to not hold back you know, of course you learn, there are times and places to say things and I'm not just gonna go into like, uh, meet up with my friend with her kids and say all the cuss words and all the crazy things I would have on my mind. I'm gonna temper myself, but there's freedom in having the space to be able to vocalize what you need to say and saying it. And I think that that's one of the most, like the, maybe like the most diluted or the simplest or the most common uh, areas of freedom that people can have is being able to say what you need to say, saying what you want to say, saying what's honest, you know, owning up to your thoughts, owning up to your reactions, owning up to what you think and what you believe. I think that that is a very important aspect to freedom because I find that without vocalizing those things, obviously you can become really repressed. You end up keeping things inside. You end up also creating situationships and relationships and dynamics that maybe aren't super honest or true. And so in essence, you box yourself into this idea of what people think of you and what people should believe that you should behave and you kind of end up not being free at all. You know, so that brings me to kind of the second place of freedom outside of vocalizing what you need to say is sort of creating an environment surrounding yourself where you are allowed to be you unabashedly. So I, um, I have been blessed to be able to always choose situations that make me feel free. Um, and that's like going to parties in like a outfit like this, or maybe, um, you know, having what I want to eat and not thinking twice about it, or I don't know taking a job that suits my abilities. Those kinds of things bring me a lot of freedom. Being valued for my creativity brings me a lot of freedom. Uh, being valued for my contribution to relationships brings me a lot of freedom. So I focused really heavily on surrounding myself with people and relationships and situations that support that main goal as well. Um, ever since I was in high school, I think on my like graduation cap, it said something like set yourself free. And I think that this is what I was talking about back then when I was 18, was being able to do something like this and being able to be this kind of person and not have to think too much about the situation that surrounds me because the situation that surrounds me actually supports me in the decision to want to be this kind of free. Um, and that's something I know, it, it's not necessarily like the easiest thing to manage. Like I know that it's, it's, uh, it can be tough you know, it can be really, even in my experience, it's been really tough to separate myself from people or separate myself from situations or bring myself a certain type of freedom that I needed because I was afraid, truly. I was afraid of losing out on opportunities and I was afraid of losing maybe relationships that I felt were valuable at the time. And I was afraid of being left behind or maybe not being valued for what I think or who I am. And those things didn't bring me any freedom whatsoever. You know, I think when I think about my own freedom, I think about how I got it. And that's kind of why I value it so much because I never let someone else be the person to say, okay, you're free. Cause that's not freedom. You know, freedom is choosing your own destiny and owning up to your own fate and saying, okay, this is who I am. This is who I'm gonna be. You know, I'm not gonna hold back. I'm not gonna think twice about this. And 
of course you think about stuff and you want to like make sure that you're doing things correctly and you make sure correctly for you and you want to make sure that you're being honest with yourself and like every step of the way is a step of the journey but in all that i think if you're it for me i was looking at this like overarching freedom so i was like okay how do i get to that place where i don't think twice about what people are saying about me where i don't second guess my own creative vision where i don't over analyze the opportunities that are coming my way where i can begin to actually just create freely and be free um and it started obviously like i said it's a journey so it started with me and like when i was like 15 i like looked up my name on like this like etymology thing so it was like okay my 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 uh, my birth name francis i was like what does it mean um da -da 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 -da, typing, typing, typing. and francis is it comes from so it's like okay a person from france but it's also another word for someone who's a person who is free so like free person and I don't know, ever since I found that out about my birth name, I was just like, okay, there's no way that I can be boxed in. There's no way that I'm supposed to be like bound by anything. And, and since then, you know, I've taken a lot of, it took a lot of dedication to own up to that. So in dynamics that weren't working for me, I had to choose myself regardless of the interaction. So sometimes you end up doing things and reacting to things and saying things that might feel like an overreaction or like it's too much or like you're not doing the right thing, but that's an avenue towards freedom, if that makes sense. So like sometimes, yeah, I did have to overreact and like sit in like the office and like cuss out my bosses and like say all these negative things and like become this like reactive person. But it wasn't until I went through that reaction that I was able to actually let go of the reaction and realize more and more about who I was and what I wanted and what I wanted to be and who I was supposed to be. And those things, that's kind of how you go about getting freedom. It's not supposed to be like some pretty little iffy dippy process where you kind of just like, oh, you know, like I'm free, like free spirited, nothing. It's like, no. Yeah, that free-spirited lifestyle is a thing, but it's not necessarily achievable without going through the darkest sides of what your freedom looks like and should be to you. Um, like, my freedom comes with that, you know? It comes with going against what people think um, an, an assigned male at birth body should look like and behave like and sound like and do. It goes really far against what fashion uh, looks like so like even this is I mean of course like don't get me wrong fashion is like one of my first loves but it's not fashion trend per se or even designer it's more fashion in the sense of like how can you express yourself through your fashion who can you be through your fashion like what side of you can you expose the most you know fashion is the first place where people interact with you before they even interact with you physically and I think it's great and it's a huge opportunity to be able to express who you are through what you have on decorating your body so like even this you know i want to show people that i'm a unique thinker that i like to rewear stuff and i like to make exciting um outfits and things that maybe other people wouldn't wear and i like to be a little adventurous and that's very true to my personality. Of course, you know, then we have like the opera gloves. So I'm like semi-conservative and like I'm wearing a sneaker. So it's like, obviously I'm a little relaxed, you know? But um, I think that those, those are all different avenues to freedom. So like, it really comes to being honest and being true and not being afraid and letting go of fear. You know, I think fear holds a lot of people back. I think fear can be a motivator in a lot of different aspects. Like I experience a lot of depth within my fear because it motivates me to not want to be categorized and it motivates me to rebel against different ideas of gender and fashion and identity politics and artist politics and like pop world politics. And it makes me want to be somebody that isn't afraid to stand up and isn't afraid to say certain things. Um, but it also puts me in a position where I want to make sure that I articulate what I'm saying 
and it motivates me, you know, but I think that it's taken a lot of years and a lot of hard work to be able to have my fear be the motivator instead of the detractor. And I think fear oftentimes is the thing that detracts people from their freedom and keeps them away from wanting to be free because they're scared of what people think or how they'll be perceived or who they are in the world and maybe being honest about who they really are. You know, those things can bring on a lot of anxiety and bring on a lot of fear and really hold you back from who you are. You know, I think even even in my journey as a musician, um, I started out making some of the most unsonically appealing music um, back in like Richmond Rainforest Pop days. Shout out if you knew me back then and if you know me now, that's the kind of person that I've always been. Um, which is great because I think now at this point, there's a, a different level of self-acceptance that I never had before. And because I've gone through the work of understanding my fears and understanding my insecurities and limitations and and like uh, breaking open who I was and am and like shedding all the other things that people have kind of imposed onto me and what they wanted me to be, I actually was able to gain um, a higher level of freedom because I'm able to make music that is just for me. You know, like I don't, like this last EP, um, Lear, it was really exciting for me because it was a commitment that I made where I said, okay, I'm ready to commit to making my music something that speaks for me versus it being something that's trying to color in a persona or an idea of me, it actually is just able to be vibrantly and honestly me. Um, and that was freeing, you know, that was so freeing because I said, no, you know, I don't care how my voice is going to crack through these notes and I can even sustain these notes if I'm even hitting notes, period. You know, I don't care what people are going to think about these lyrics and I don't care about how um, un about, about the digestion of it, you know, it was just literally about making something that was super simple, super succinct, and super liberating. I wanted to be liberated, you know, I wanted to be free. I wanted to say this is just unabashedly who I am, this is who I am as an artist. I can own up to my own creative vision now because I have the confidence and the self-acceptance that comes from within to be able to be that kind of free, you know? Um, and of course I share these things because I want other people to know that everyone goes through this stuff, you know? No matter who you are, no matter what level of an artist you are, whether you be like some 900 Grammy winning artist or some like low level lo-fi just out on the start, as long as you're being authentically who you are, that's really all it's about. You know, you don't need to have approval. You don't need to have I mean, okay, don't get me wrong. Obviously, everybody wants to have some sort of approval. We all want um, financial stability and we want to be paid for our art. We want to be paid for who we are. But it comes if it comes, you know? it's. I think we, we've entered into a sphere of the universe where now everything is measured on like social media metrics and it's all about like who you know and like what you've done and like who you've worked with. But really think about like other artists in the past and people who have made really um, culture shocking and culture moving art, they didn't make the stuff because they wanted to ap appeal to 900 million followers. They made the stuff because they wanted to make the stuff. Like some of the most iconic painters and sculptors and performance artists in history have always kind of pushed the envelope forward and not been afraid. You know, I think, I mean, I'm not. I don't know if they've been afraid, but they've chosen to be whatever it was that was coming. They chose to let out whatever needed to get let out. They chose to express and do it unabashedly, you know, courageously, freely. And I think that um, that doesn't apply necessarily to just artists. That can apply to everybody. I think that's a lesson to be learned amongst all of us is that it's not about 
what you make as an artist or who you're supposed to be or like what you think in that regard. It's about just being unabashedly yourself. So like, even if you're somebody who I really, example, I really want to be a barista. That's what I want to do. I want to be a barista for a coffee shop. That's going to set me free. And you search for that. You don't let other people tell you, oh, I, you should be a bartender. Oh, you should work in a dairy farm or you should be a stripper. No, you, you, you know what you want for yourself and that's going to be how you set yourself free. If you don't have to compare yourself to anybody else. You don't have to take in what the environment around you wants from you. You have to choose what you want and just go for it. You know, dedicate yourself to it. Fight for it. You know, if, if you end up spending all of your money uh, putting it out and like making it, that's, I mean, obviously that's not ideal, but that's exactly what you should do. There shouldn't be any part of you that holds back and there should be no regret because regret and attachment is another aspect of just fear because all you're doing is holding yourself back and you're not letting yourself fully become or express or just be. Um, so that's kind of what I was thinking about freedom. You know, I think, of course, you know, what I don't like about the world right now is that freedom comes at a cost. And the cost is like government and socio cultural, political, religious rules that have for a very long time helped serve to get humanity maybe to a certain threshold. And I think that now, especially with the age of Aquarius and there is like that double, that Gemini full moon in Sagittarius that happened last year. Plus we just had what a Leo full moon in Aquarius. So it's a lot of like closing of chapters and evolutions and completions and we're moving into a new age where it's not about uh, what the world wants from you. It's about what you want for you. It's about how you want to go about it. It's about what you want. And it's taken me um, a long time to decide what I wanted. Um, and you know, the truth evades me as an existential taunt, but it's not, I think the thing that I used to, I used to always say like, I'm going to discover the truth, you know, but I think that there came a point where I said, no, my truth is in the mode of discovery. My existence is in the mode of everlasting change. And I will always be in the process of discovering the truth because the truth is amorphous and it's ever changing and it's ever deepening deepening and it's infinite and there are so many layers that if i chose to like live in the mindset of i would only be free once i had the truth i would never be free but what liberated me was realizing that some of these things are just infinite and some of these things are endless journeys and i will always be on these endless journeys because that's kind of what i'm destined for I'm destined to never know the truth, but I'm supposed to get as close as possible. And that's it. And, and that's okay. Cause that, that, that frees me, it liberates me to be able to say, you know what, actually I could just be, I could just be being and existing and being in the present. That's my freedom. You know, being able to love, being able to accept love, being able to be confident, being able to just exist, that brings me so much freedom because I'm not limited by what people think of me or what I should do or who I should be. I'm liberated by the fact that people would even want any of that. And I'm liberated in saying like, I don't want what other people have, you know? I don't want what, what like say other artists have because I want what's for me. I, I will never compare myself to anybody else because no one else can be me and no one else can be you. No one else can be Susie Carmichael working at, um, you know, uh, lifetime insurance, whatever, selling, selling fraud and whatever. No one else can be her. And if she lives in her truth and that's what she's supposed to do, by all means, she should be doing it. And I think that by all means, everyone should be doing what they want to do. I think that that's kind of how you gain freedom. Of course, that brings in other conversations of like, moral right and wrong and things like that. So obviously there are like some good inherent truths, like don't murder, you know, don't um, assault other people. Don't take away from anybody else's freedoms because that's not true freedom. You know, I think that 
the murder. <laughs> but it's not about it's it's not about measuring yourself on those types of things. You know, I think it's just about what you have to do for yourself. And it's not about thinking about what other people are going to think about you. It's not about waiting to see what other people think about you. It's not about thinking about like, oh my God, I have to achieve these things. I have to measure myself against the level of success. No, it's just about being free now in the moment. You know, it frees me to be able to sit here and have summer conversations and it frees me to say these things out loud. And it's liberating for me to say, I don't have to think about what other people think about me. Who cares what other people think? Who cares what the world thinks? Who cares what kind of boxes people want to put you in? All that matters is what box do you want to subscribe to? And ultimately, in true freedom, I think that there's a space to say that you wouldn't subscribe to any box, you know? You would just kind of exist without thinking about boxes and without thinking about boundaries and without thinking about limitations. And you'll just be free. That's freedom. You know, that's freedom to me. Being who you are unabashedly. Dressing how you want to dress presenting how you want to present, doing what you want to do, the services you want to exchange for money, I guess we'll call it that, because I don't like calling it a career, because it's not necessarily a career, it's just what you do for money, and being passionate and dedicated, and just committing to yourself, whatever that means. For everybody, it's different. Every Even two identical twins who've have the same exact everything will want different things and in them choosing themselves that's how they gain freedom in all of us choosing ourselves that's how we gain freedom you choose yourself you know what you want you dive into what you want and you just discover it's an endless discovery it's an endless journey but that's just the journey that's just the point that's the that's the whole point you know it's never supposed to be about different types of like what I want and like or what other people want for me or like things like that it's really just about what you want to do and who you want to be and that's what I like to call freedom is being liberated from anybody else's ideas of what you want and living your life literally just for yourself that's what I call freedom being able to make those decisions and committing to them and regardless of the circumstance, regardless of what's happening, saying, this is what I'm gonna do, this is who I'm gonna be, and I'm gonna be free. So that brings me to, um, of course, I have a recurring segment, What's in My Purse? So today we have my little um, chrome tote that I made. I was very excited about this. I have this whole line set up for like chrome uh, pieces that I've been working on and I think that they're all really pretty and really cute and anybody that knows me knows how much I love chrome and like how big of an influence chrome has been on my entire aesthetic I think because it contributes to like that's about the future and like what we could be going into and like what's next um, so I really love chrome you know I think that it's really exciting and I really love this little bag I was really excited about it you know I think it's one of my favorite little things I've made and, um, you know, we just really are excited about her. So today in my purse, I have a clock. <laughs> I know, I have a clock. And the clock to me, I wanted to bring it on here because I wanted to talk about something that we're all free from, and that's time. Everyone's free from time. Time doesn't exist. Everyone says that, but I'm telling you, I'm here to tell you as a regular person, time doesn't exist. There's no limits, you know, there's no, there's no such thing as time. If you think about the structure of reality in the universe, it's, I forget what the shape is called, but it's like an inverted like circle thing that goes in and out of itself. Um, it's kind of like the symbol of, that I like to think about a lot is the Ouroboros, the snake eating its tail. And what I want to bring from that is, um, I'm gonna check, I think the computer just, the camera just turned off. So, 
So as it turns out, um, you know, I love to talk. So I talked my way through an entire two seconds thing or whatever, and I ended up cutting myself off and the video didn't capture, I think, the what's in my purse moment. So reset what's in my purse. <laughs> um, really briefly, I just want to say I made this little tote. I was very excited about this kind of chrome aesthetic. I've been really focused on what the future holds and what's coming, and I really enjoy uh, making my wardrobe kind of reflect the passion that I have about the future. Um, and I don't know, I guess in this entire look, maybe I'm going to dinner or like a meeting. I think I'm going to a meeting. In this outfit, I think I'd be signing, um, uh, going to a meeting to sign a contract or something. I feel very excited about something, wearing something like this. It's not warm at all and my basin's freezing, but um, that's kind of where I'm going with this little silver chrome tote. I'm really excited about her. Um, so what I brought with me today was a clock. And <laughs> the thing inside my birthday is a clock because I just wanted to remind everybody that you are on your own time. That you never have to worry about the time that other people are on and you never have to worry about time wasted or time spent because everything happens in its own time and everything happens for everybody right on time. And the second that you choose to live in the present and the second that you choose to be in your own time and like on time in that way, that is exactly going to be the moment where you become free because you relinquish old ideas of how you see time to be perceived and you come to accept that the linear way that people see time isn't real and time is not real. It's literally a, a construct that we've created to be able to measure ourselves against ourselves, but time is truly infinite and the linear aspect of time only exists to measure a small blip of a lifespan in an endless recycling of conscious energy and godlike not even godlike that sounds like really like but more like spiritual existence that we all what like your soul your soul doesn't abide by time think about it that way so why should you that's what she's for so thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna do the exit thing again because I already did it, but thank you so much for watching. Thanks for coming and, and being a part of Frank's TV. Thank you for enjoying everything that you've ever enjoyed from me. And thank you for being a part of my life and a part of this existence that I get to experience. And thank you for being on time with, you know, your own time, I guess. And hopefully everyone gets a little bit of presence and a little bit of moment and excitement and inspiration to be in their own time. Um, live with no regrets and I will talk to you soon. Bye!